Welcome to Unit 2, Lesson 7 of CKLA Skills. Today we are going to read and use quotation marks in sentences. Quotation marks are used when people are talking directly, so it's direct speaking. We're also going to read the frog race. You're going to read it fluently. And you're going to identify the use of quotation marks in the story, The Frog Race. Now, there are special punctuation marks we use when writing to show a person is speaking. So, if someone speaks in a story, there's special ways that we show this. It makes it easier for a reader to see that someone is talking. This punctuation is called quotation marks. And you can see these quotation marks that are drawn on this slide, they're the red quotation marks. They start the actual talking, like whatever the person says, the dialogue. They start the dialogue and then they end, they come at the ending of what the person is saying. Quotation marks show the reader exactly what a person has said during conversation or dialogue. So it's what is coming out of their mouth exactly is in those quotation marks. When practicing dialogue aloud, we can cut both hands around our mouth to represent where quotation marks will go in a sentence. So if you see that someone is saying something in a story, cup your hands around your mouth. You would start where the person start talk, starts talking, and your quotation marks would end where the person stops talking. Let's practice cupping our hands while I read a few sentences aloud. I like to sing. So cup your hands around your mouth and I want you to repeat that dialogue. I like to sing. I like to sing. Now you see that we put our quotation marks before the word I and after the word sing. So these are the exact words that are coming out of someone's mouth. That's their dialogue. They're talking. Let's eat lunch. Cup your hands around your mouth and let's read the sentence like it's our dialogue. We are saying the sentence. Let's eat lunch. Notice that your first quotation comes before let's and your last quotation mark comes after the word lunch or after the period because this person is saying let's eat lunch and that's a complete sentence. We will now practice marking writing dialogue with quotation marks. And remember, dialogue is what someone says. I'm going to ask you a question. For example, what's your favorite sport? And you're going to come up with an answer, and we're going to put it into a sentence using these quotation marks or dialogue. So when something comes out of someone's mouth, when someone's saying something, that's when we use our quotation marks around it. Okay, let's look at our examples. Sometimes we use speech bubbles. So you may see like on a brain pop or on some stories, you have those speech bubbles that are used to show the words that a person says or said. So you have those speech bubbles to show dialogue. Like here, the person would be saying, I like to swim. I like to play baseball. That's what the person is actually speaking. They're actually saying. Now, if you look at it in quotations, Ryan said, I like to swim. You can see that Ryan is the one talking, but Ryan's not the one telling what Ryan said. So when you talk about something that someone said and you're not that actual person, I told you that Miss Connell said, get your book out. Now we put quotations around exactly what the person said. So here you take what Ryan said. What was in that, that speech bubble? I like to swim. Notice that it's in quotation marks because it's exactly what Ryan said. And you notice that the rest of the sentence is separated with a comma. Ryan said, I like to swim. That shows the reader exactly what is coming out of Ryan's mouth. The end punctuation is inside of the quotation marks. So when you end that sentence in a period, you put your quotation marks after that end mark. 
Ryan said, I like to swim. The first word of the sentence and the first word in the quotation mark is also capitalized because Ryan is speaking in a complete sentence. So we need to capitalize the first word in Ryan's sentence also. Now you are going to read the For All Grace fluently. You may read it aloud. You may read it in your head. You may read it to someone. But if you struggle with the word, remember, you need to go back and reread it a few times to practice it for fluency. Now before you read it for fluency, I want you to take your highlighter or a crayon and you're going to underline direct quotations. So look for those quotation marks in the passage. You have people that are speaking directly. I want you to underline with your crayon or highlight those direct quotations. So it's where it starts, the quotation with that quotation mark, and where the quotation mark ends. Now look at the first three paragraphs. I've highlighted or underlined the direct quotations in the first three paragraphs. You can see that on the first paragraph, Dad, what happened with the jumping frog? I missed the end of the tale. I was sleeping. All of that came out of Mike's mouth. That was his direct quotation. Mike didn't say, Dad said, Mike said when he woke up. So someone's telling it, and that's what came out of Mike's mouth when they were retelling that story. So use your highlighter or crayon and find the other direct quotations in the frog race. After you have found your direct quotations, read the frog, frog race fluently. Practice looking for those vowel sounds that we have discussed. When you are finished, you are going to complete page 39 in your packet. Now this is where you're going to fill in the blank with the correct word to make the sentence complete. But you're also going to be looking for those quotation marks and where they need to go in these sentences. So on page 39, you're going to fill in the blanks with the correct word to make the sentence complete. And you're going to be placing those quotation marks where they need to go. So if someone is directly speaking, you're going to start with their saying directly. What's coming out of their mouth, you're going to start it with a quotation. And then you're going to end it after the end mark with a quotation. So I would go through and I would fit my words in the blank first. And then I would put my quotations in. Remember, quotation marks are when someone is speaking directly. It's what's coming directly out of their mouth. Now when you are practicing 